What's up, volleyball fans? I'm Darren Tipton, and welcome to the VB Adrenaline Podcast. Our podcast, we will dive deep into the heart of the game, bringing you the hottest topics, prospects, and a buzz surrounding prep and college volleyball, especially the world of recruiting. In each episode, our crew will spotlight rising stars who are shaking up the national game. Plus, we will serve you the scoop on current events that have coaches and fans talking courtside. Tune in for the episodes that spotlight tomorrow's college stars, new trends in the sport, plus interviews that will keep you informed on the explosion that is volleyball in the USA. You can connect with us on social media, Instagram at vbadrenaline.com underscore and Twitter at vbadrenaline. Be part of the conversation. Share your thoughts on your favorite players, prospects, and predictions by using hashtag VBAdrenaline. So grab a seat, volleyball fans, and get ready to dive into the world of spikes, sets, and serves with the VB Adrenaline Podcast. See you there. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome uh, to episode one of season two, uh, the VB Adrenaline uh, Podcast, and I'm Darren Tipton. And man, what a great uh, episode. We're taking a break from the recruiting and, and talking with coaches. And uh, this is somebody I am so lucky to have on. I can't wait for all of us to learn not only her story, but her perspective. Uh, and Charlotte Benson from Indiana and Munciana and IU Verbal. And if you haven't followed her um, miraculous story uh, throughout this spring and, and early summer. She's going to let us know on that, but uh, but a truly inspirational person. And I, I, I'll tell you what, um, I followed it closely. And uh, um, one of the stories that needs to be told is we talk about people in the sport. Um, and we're really going to get into perspective. Um, we're going to get into those people that I think make the great stories in the sport. And Charlotte's just an amazing young lady. And I think when you find out where she comes from and what she's made up of, that's not going to be surprising. So first of all, uh, Charlotte, we covered you last year when uh, like our third or fourth day ever reco- uh, covering recruiting. Yeah. when We were brand new covering the 25s. Uh, but nice to face to face meet you. Yeah, you too. Yeah, and and we talked a little bit before we started recruiting, and um, uh, God bless that we can uh, talk to you face to face. We saw you at the uh, uh, the Indianapolis uh, Under Armour event, uh, a little more close up, and you absolutely crushed it. And then. Uh, as people may or may not know, um, in May, I believe, you just uh, had a little medical emergency, not a little one, a, a rather large one. And let's go through briefly for people that may not know, go through the brief breakdown of what that was, those first 48 to 72 hours, and then we'll kind of go through the recovery and what's taken place afterwards. But tell our viewers what happened. Um, and just how serious that was. Well, it first started out as just like a sickness, like strep throat or something. Um, and then <laughs> taken, I was like blacking out, which has never happened to me. Um, like when I was sick, so I was like, this is something that like is more serious. So I was taken to the ER um, and they told me it was toxic shock syndrome. <laughs> Um, and I was like going septic, which means that like the infection was like in my body and it was like attacking things. Um, so then they flew me down to Riley, um, in a helicopter, they helicopter me to Riley. And I don't really remember like a lot of things that happened then. Um, but I do know I was sedated for, I was intubated which means like a tube down my throat, like I couldn't breathe on my own. Um, And the next two days, things really went downhill. And I had to get on ECMO, which is a machine that they put like two tubes in you and it helps your heart and it like, it helps the blood flow because my heart like wasn't pumping blood on its own. 
So I was on ECMO and I was on dialysis, which is a machine for your kidneys because my kidneys were shutting down as well. And then <laughs> obviously the ventilator for my lungs. So I was on like three life support machines um, and I was like knocked out for a good 10 days. Um, and then I woke up and, you know, started to do better. Yeah. And I mean, it was those first couple of days where it was really not knowing if you were mm-hmm. going to make it at all, let alone pull out of it. And, and, um, the, the, you know, social media, uh, your friends, your family, the volleyball community, you know, a lot of prayers going out there, but people really not, really not knowing, um, had to be a tremendously, scary time for your friends and your family, especially, I'm guessing. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I think it was really hard for my family, especially yeah. um, just and my mom, like being a doctor. So she knows like what some of these things are, the beauty of what they are. Um, so just me being put like on ECMO, which is like uh, something that's super risky and they didn't even know if it was going to work or not. So it was really scary for them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, people, volleyball community kind of pitching in and people just asking questions. So what going on? Because it was so sudden and you'd been playing in club tournaments and here this all American and, you know, healthy body and, and everything. It was so, like you said, so sudden. And so after that, it kind of was, I, I think, if I remember correctly, um, following vicariously through the social media world, uh, it was about three days after there was a, a news report, or maybe it was, it might've been your school team mm-hmm. posted a report that it was something like thumbs up, you know, positive signs for yeah. Charlotte. Right. And, and so what was that? And then kind of what happened then? Um, was that maybe when you were taken off the, uh, I don't want to say the, the, the life support was about three or four days after. It was, yeah. I think it was because the second day that I was there was like the really, really low, like bad point. Like I could have like passed away like anytime um, then. So I think like after that, I started to get stable and they started to like, know that it was going to be okay and that I was like on the up instead of on the down. So I think that's when. Okay. Yeah. And then there was a long time really of no updates, Mm -hmm. right? They were just, and so what during that time, was that a long hospital stay and just slow recovery? What was going on with you, you know, during that time in the hospital? Um, that, I think that was when I like, or like after I woke up, cause I was there for like two or three weeks after I woke up. Um, and that was like, that was just like a waiting game, just a waiting to like get off all of these machines, like while I was awake. So that's when it was. Just a lot of laying around and yeah. and waiting and waiting and waiting. Mm-hmm. What, your time once, I'm sure once you realized and, and came, kind of came back to and and realized the situation. Um, initially, a lot of fear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I like when I did come to. I was like, oh, like just yesterday, like. I like took a helicopter ride and we're here like and they were like no like it's been like 10 or 11 days since that happened wow. and that was just I didn't really know the severity of everything because I was just like I just got sick and I'm you know here now and I didn't know what all happened yeah so once that you know you go through the the emotions of everything of dealing with crisis and and loss, if you will, or, or, or whatever, but, uh, uh, brief, so you, you go through that and, and then is it, 
Is it more impatience when they start kind of giving you like, hey, you're you're going to heal, you're going to be okay, it looks you're going to, you know, survive, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to live. And then I'm 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 guessing as a competitor, as a top-tier athlete, the first question that has to start to come to mind, how quickly did I come to mind to ask that question of can I play volleyball? It was it was probably like one of the first days whenever I like thought about it. Um, and everyone told me like, you're going to play again. Like they were just reassuring me. Um, and I was a little competitive about it because on like, after laying in a bed for like a whole month, um, I like couldn't stand, I couldn't sit up. So like on one of the first days they have like, PT people that like come in your room and like see what you can do um and one of the first days I was like I'm going to stand like I can't even sit up right now but like when they come in like I'm my goal is like to stand up and it was like the first or second day of PT and I like I like I stood up and I got to stand up so I think that was a really like I don't know monumental thing for me to do just because it's something that I told myself like like this is what I need to do well And of course, you're from Munciana. You're like, you're from like the biggest, tough guy, most competitive place in the world. Of course, you're going to stand up on the second day or like, that's where you're from. That's what you guys do there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that's in your guys' blood. (laughs) So of course, that's what you're built to do. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you guys are trained no other way. Yeah. (laughs) Do it. Get it done. Just get it. That's right. You guys just get it done. Well, yeah. So nobody, I don't think anybody's worried about the work part. They're probably worried about the overwork part. That I've had a lot of coaches be like, when you get (laughs) light, we're going to have to like hold you back a little. Cause when I do, I was like, I'm just, (laughs) I have to be in the gym all the time. (laughs) Well, that's what I was going to ask. Are they going to like have to bring in a totally separate coaching staff to go to? Cause I don't think any of them know half speed either. Do they? No, <laughs> really, I'll have to, I'll have to have my high school coach or something. Yeah, all a good day, to all a good fun. But so when you so as you start going through this and and you through prog- prognosis, um, but you're getting better. And where you know you're at now? Because you said, I mean, you're still not cleared. And you know, we talked about this. Um, you're, you know your body and you're starting to, you're able to lift now, right? So tell people where you're at now, as far as your physical health, a very fortunate, correct? Um, The recovery that you've made as opposed to what many people that have that happen to them. Mm -hmm. Right. So talk about that quick. Yeah. So um, I am able to, I can do like, not much like not much lifting just because i lost so much muscle um laying down for a whole month Um, so i lost a lot of it so right now it's kind of just building that back up so that when i do get the green light to play i'll be strong enough to play um and yeah most people like they were telling me um when i was in the hospital they were like like I didn't have to do like inpatient rehab at all. Like I just went straight home um, to do like outpatient rehab. Um, And most people do need to do inpatient just because I was caught at a time where I was like so in shape and so like athletic. So I am fortunate that this happened whenever I am like really athletic and like that. So that really helped. Um, me be able to like recover this quickly and now i do feel like normal like back to normal um apart from the fact that i can't like go run or go like do cardio or workout um but yeah so i want to ask you about because you've done i know you've done some of the ntd piece of and the high level athlete because here's one thing I've learned over the last couple of years interviewing so many of you top level athletes is that you guys have a different mindset 
of no matter what it is on the court, in the classroom, in life, when something goes wrong, you just adapt. Yeah. Overcome. You can't hang your head. So in this, I mean, was there a lot of time for self pity, or were you just like, I mean, was there a lot of time for like, frick, I may never get to play volleyball again. Mm-hmm. Well, which there would would be completely understandable. If there was, or was it just like, this is today, I make the best of today, I work as hard as I can today, and I win today? Yeah. Um, it was like in the beginning, I was like, like, why did this happen? Or like, why did this happen to me? Like, I was sort of like in that mindset, but I did have to change out of that really quickly because I was like, okay, like, what am I going to do tomorrow about it? Like, what am I going to do the next day? Like I've been taking things really day by day, um, which has really helped. And I've tried to like stay present in the moment where I am so that I can, you know, that helps. Like I'm not looking too far ahead. So then I get stressed out about the future. And then like, I'm taking it like, what am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do today? Um, Yeah. And so as we transition a little bit, everybody, I want to, I want to talk. So I asked Charlotte if this is okay. And uh, she said it was, um, I know I'm obviously talking uh, with an athlete. I, you know, we tweeted about this a little bit this, uh, this week, um, a couple of athletes that I viewed at nationals that kind of had the it factor. And, and uh, we watched uh, Charlotte. I just, I kind of gauged that and, and, uh, I, I had asked Charlotte, if it's it okay if we just talk about things maybe a little bit deeper um, that, you know, uh, I get a little emotional, emotional for me, um, emotional for Charlotte, but um, we try and kind of keep things a little bit real on VB Adrenaline. And and um, I I have gotten to know Mike, um, Mike Lingenfelter, right? Your club mm-hmm. director. Um, and uh him and I have had the talk over the years and and tell you this before. And the reason I'm close, I'm sure he can be really tough in the gym. Yeah. Right. But I also believe most of his athletes probably know that him and his staff at the end of the day, probably care about you guys. Right. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is why you will train extra hard for him. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and so we we talk about uh, perspective and your perspective. How how have your thing, how's your perspective maybe on things going through this short period of time changed? Um, Now you may still get every dream and every goal you've ever wanted, but has your perspective or your family's perspective changed at all? Um, in the last couple months? Um, I think definitely going through this, my perspective, just not only on volleyball, but in life in general, has just changed big time. Um, Just about if something small happens and I'll get like irritated about that, but then I think back and I'm like, like why? Like that thing that just, that small thing that just happened, it really, it, it matters in the moment, but in the grand scheme of things, like it really isn't that big of a deal. So I've been saying that about a lot of things. Um, and it's just like helped me keep a better mindset. Um, I've just been trying to be really positive about this whole thing, you know, like everything happens for a reason. So I like that happened to me for a reason. Um, So, yeah, and I think my perspective on the future, like, how I want to reach, well, I obviously want to reach my goals, and, like, I do, but how I reach them has changed a little, Um, just, like, taking care of my body more, you know, taking care of my mind, um, doing all those things, so that, like, in that, it has, my perspective has changed. Well, and, and you and I talked, you know, briefly, like it could be taken away from you tomorrow. You literally 
found that out. And so what if your entire life, if that's all it is, is that you can touch 10 foot, four inches. What if, what if that is taken away tomorrow? Right. And, Mm -hmm. and what I tell people, and and I'm guessing in your gym, this is preached quite a bit that, you got to be more, and, and a lot of college players have told me this when they get to college, Hey, I'm a lot more than a volleyball player. Yeah. Yeah. That was something that I did struggle with. Um, before, like before this all happened, I was like defining myself as a volleyball player. Like, like it's who I am, but my high school coach really helped me. Like, it's not who you are. It's what you do. And I think after all of this, I'm finding myself more outside of volleyball right now because I am still in the gym every day, like watching my high school team, like helping out. Um, But I think I've really found myself outside of volleyball. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, like I, they say, well, you ever get, you're worried about or you have parents who get upset with you because you didn't rank their kid high enough. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, like in our family, I have one nephew and, and, you know, I told you this, that he was good or bad. I don't know. It it just is what it is. He's born with cerebral palsy. Yeah. Right. And I coach college football and the kid could, the kid could read a four, three defense at the age of four. Mm -hmm. Right. Love sports. Would have loved to play. That's what life was. So in our family, an all American is being able to walk, right? Yeah. Like that's it, doesn't make him a more or any less. So I don't care if you're ranked number three in the country or number 10. Yeah. To us, that's perception, right? Yeah. Like it comes up to us, like it's being able to walk around the Las Vegas Convention Center for a day and then have to go home and ice your legs. Mm-hmm. That, but you still enjoy the sport and you can help people and be a good person. And I think it's people like you with this. That's why I ask, talk to great athletes, like you're a great athlete, but what kind of role model are you? Yeah. Right. Like I look at people like you, what do you have a great chance now, no matter what happens. And yeah, this stinks for you right now. And I hope, and so many thousands of people hope you're back there crushing it in the big 10 in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Right. But when you are crushing the Big Ten, are you going to be the right kind of role model who now is even more appreciative of their gift, right? Do you think Do you think it's changed you? Because I'm guessing you're a pretty good person before. Do you just appreciate it maybe even a little bit more? Oh, yeah. I appreciate many things. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that sounds silly, but when I was um, in the hospital, I couldn't drink water. Like, my like swallowing like I could not drink water and all I wanted for like this was like two weeks like I was literally like I just want a sip of water like some ice cold like people were like can you like you can't wait like what are you gonna eat first when you can eat and I was like I just want water like that's all I want so like every time sometimes like I'll take a sip and I'll just be like wow like I'm just happy to drink water honestly yeah well you get uh, that chance. Cause you say I'm going to get back and, and mm-hmm. I'm all in, <laughs> I'm all in. We get there, whether it's first match practice, whatever, what, what do you think is the thing like you, like you said, that sip of water volleyball related, what is that thing you miss the most, or you can't wait for the most with volleyball? Definitely. Like crushing a ball. I just want to crush a ball. Yeah. So, okay, um, you can be on my team. That's what volleyball is. <laughs> if God gives you the ability to crush a ball, don't ever roll it. Don't ever roll shot. Yeah. That's good. Hey, IU, I'm sorry. She's never roll shot when she gets to you guys. That's yeah. right. But what about like little things? Like, do you appreciate and miss like dorky or goofy little stuff like pregame rituals or the like do you I mean is it appreciation for all of those things more or even some conditioning drill that you used to hate like I'd give anything to do that again right now yeah like a hard I just want to go through a hard practice like I don't know like in Montana sometimes we have like 
really hard practices, but once you get over with them, you're like, wow, I did that. And I just want that feeling of like, wow, I just completed that really hard practice or um, definitely like in high school season, the pregame rituals, like in the locker room and everything, which I'll still be able to do that. Just like I won't actually be playing, but yeah, just doing that with my team um, and just being out on the court because with some of these players, like some of them are like graduating early and like this is my last chance that like I'll never be able to play with them again. So I just want to play alongside like, <laughs> some of them. And, and I love uh, what you said. And, and, and first of all, we can't uh, we talk. I love we have talked a lot. What a great choice. Um, and the little that I've gotten to talk to that staff, I think. IU, they are doing things the right way. Mm -hmm. um, and when I have talked with them, they believe in people. And now that I see they're recruiting people like you, um, and they've talked to me about not skipping steps, and they won't take the fast track to take yeah. the wrong person, mm -hmm. right? And they ever mentioned that in like the recruiting pitch about you can't skip steps by taking the wrong people? Yeah, they definitely, especially they make sure whenever they recruit someone, um, like that everyone knows before they do it. Or they'll ask like the players, like, like, are you okay if we take this person? Like, I don't know, just like that really like trust in them and that they have in us has been really neat. And through like my recruiting process with them, um, it was like, hey, I'm like, before I even commit, like, I'm going to come see the campus. Like, I'm going to come see how it feels because they want you to see how it is and how, like, everything works there. Like, before you make a decision, before they make a decision, like, I don't know. I think, And I think that's something really special about them. <clears throat> when I talked to all the 26s and they – I mean, they all echoed that. And there's a couple of them that were like, I wasn't really thinking I oh, you at all when this I, process started. Yeah, I whenever I started mine, I was like, I don't even know. I don't want to stay in Indiana. Like, I was yeah. not thinking I you at all. And after really talking to them, I was like, wow. Like, it, it kind of blew me away. And I was like, this is where I want to go. I know. Yeah, Rachel, I mean, I've got no – Coach Rachel pretty well, and and seems like she does a great job. And see with this training, but but they just uh, like I'm guessing as much as they can do with rules, whatever. But his contact have been really supportive and in, in reaching out. I'm sure you know your family, your, your club coaches, whatever they can do. That's got to be hard. I would think that would be hard for them to be you know show support. You know, I would be like, I would want to like drive to the hospital immediately and and. Yeah. They'll just sit there with you, but they, I'm sure, can't do all those things. But I, I can see that connection for sure. So tell people, you had told me that it's still the that you can lift, but it's still the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, that that Sabina. So where are you at? Um, what what are the doctors kind of telling you to resume full volleyball activity? Um. Well, wait, what do you mean? Like, what if like you before you can get back to like volleyball training? Uh-huh. Like what I can do. Yeah, like a hundred a hundred percent. Like what has to wait? <laughs> like what, what has to Yeah, you said you're able to do partial, like you can do strength training right mm -hmm. now, but you can't do is it more like cardio physical? Yeah. Um because like my heart, I think if I do do cardio, my heart is working too hard right now that if I like start to like pick that up, it could like overwork it. And then I could, I don't know, have a heart attack or like pass out on the floor or something. Um, so that's what they're sort of waiting for my heart, not to like, it's, like for my heart to not work as hard as it is right now. And whatever happens, then I'll be able to start going. Yeah. And 
and you've just said they have, there's, they don't give you any kind of a timeline. There's no promise with that. It's just you do checkups and, yeah. and they just keep monitoring that. Yeah. It's just, yeah, you kind of take it right now. I'm taking it like month by month, like every month I go get it checked out. So I'll get it checked again, early August. Um, and I'm hoping it's gotten a little better so that I can, get back maybe to my high school season. Sure. Well, and and what are you doing? Like, how do you mentally, you know, mentally prepare, mentally engage if that, like, what, what are the plans if that doesn't happen? Have you, like, do you start making those plans or are you literally just day by day? I'm literally day by day. I, and I think, I don't know, I've convinced myself that it's, even if this doesn't happen, like sometime in the future, I'm going to get a green light to play again. Yeah. So it's like, even if this one isn't my green light, then I keep getting stronger so that when I do get my green light, I'll be able to do volleyball things and like strong moves and I'll be up to that. Yeah. How uh, how have you been, like, did you go back? Have you been able to, like, go back to the gym and hang out or no? Or is that just really hard? Um, It was hard the first time. I have gone to, like, my high school gym a lot because they have, like, morning workouts and, like, morning practices and stuff. So I've tried to make it to every one of those just because I'm trying to be really part of the team still. and. Yeah. I don't know, um, try to like lead from on the sidelines, which is a whole new like yeah. thing for me. Um, so being in there, it is a little weird just because I'm like, I'm just sitting on the side, but I try to help in like any way I can. Like I try to still be part of it. I try to like, Hey, like pull people aside and like help yeah. them with what they're doing. Um, so yeah, I've been in the gym. I've been to my club gym a couple times and that one's a little harder just because like I was mid club season or like end of club season whenever this all happened. And I don't know, I just want to get another practice in. Yeah. No, that's that's understandable, but just if you're ready, just throw yourself in. If you got to be the best coach you can possibly be, just be the best coach, right? Like somebody else was in that spot that you're in and you know, you'll, you'll figure it out. Like, like you said, it's, it's uh, you find your place and for that day, be the best coach in the world. Right. Right. Uh, but they, uh, uh, well, we'll let you go. Do you get to do any, uh, if you got to spend a little more time with your family, maybe than than before, maybe they don't like that. Oh yeah. I spent a lot of time. Um, I was even like the other week we got to take a trip to Orlando yeah. With, with like my mom's whole side of my family and I got to just hang out with them by the pool you know I've gotten to know like some family members in ways that like I couldn't before like I've just gotten to spend so much time and it's really great like my siblings um I've just gotten to hang out with them a lot which has been nice yeah uh <clears throat> I'll leave you with uh uh two things here and then uh we will uh we'll let you go. What's one thing we always ask this. Uh, so we got this new, we call them the rookies, right? So the 27s, mm-hmm. um, and the, the 26, 26s didn't listen to us at all. They didn't, they didn't take more than about five minutes to, to <laughs> decide. Right. So, so the 27s, now you went through everything. You saw your, all your friends of the 26 class decide. Now that you've been through stuff and you've, you've you look back, is there something you maybe would have done different or prepared for, you know, through your recruiting process, not even timeline. I'm not talking about that, but just yeah. you could have done something different or advice for these 27s coming up or parents or anybody. What, what's a bit of advice you might throw out there for future prospects? Um, Probably one thing I would do differently is um, go see like campuses or like meet the coaches because I had only like went on like one official unofficial visit like 
um, before I committed, and that was to IU. So I didn't even go to the other places that I was talking to. Um, so definitely, like, go to the places that you're talking to because you never really know if you want to go there or don't want to go there until you've seen the campus and, like, the dynamic, like, between the coaches and the players and everything because that's a really important part. Okay. And last thing I'm going to leave you with is, is this, uh, a talk, uh, <clears throat> you're competing with all those athletes at a very high level. Uh, talk to some of your extremely driven, uh, competitors, classmates, whatever, that maybe only focus on volleyball, maybe like you did, uh, mm -hmm. a little bit too much before. Yeah. Um, and now with your different perspective, if you could just give them a little bit of advice without having to go through the, you know, medical emergency that you did, what's a little bit of a perspective advice that you would give them uh, that maybe you wish you would have had six months ago? Mm -hmm. um, definitely know yourself, like know who you are, get to know yourself before you get like too deep into volleyball because once you're like really deep and practicing every day like going hard trying to be the best um it's really hard when you have hard days and you're not good at volleyball some days those days are really hard when you go back home and you don't know yourself or you're like wow now everything is ruined because I had a really bad practice so definitely like know yourself and yeah. That's awesome. Well, Charlotte, I thank you so much for your time. It was great to meet you. Uh, we'll be cheering you on all the way. And uh, I know uh, you got a club director ready to uh, put you through those workouts whenever you, yeah, uh, um, yeah that big teddy bear is, uh, is ready to uh, work with you again. Um, uh, whatever you get the green light and a whole community. So we will, um, whatever happens, we're going to keep following you and any updates, um, just pumped to see them and what a great story. And, uh, one of the cool things about volleyball. So we'll be cheering for you. Um, uh, but, uh, among all things, just stay, uh, stay, stay a great person and a class act and we'll be cheering for you and praying for you and all the best to you. And, we hope uh, we see you tearing it up in the Big Ten in a couple of years. And if not, you come take my job and I'll go back to golfing, okay? <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. That's Charlotte Vincent of Indiana. And this is episode one of season two of the Volleyball Adrenaline Podcast from Darren Tipton. Uh, stay tuned for another year of exciting guests. We'll talk recruiting. We'll talk with great people like Charlotte. We'll talk with coaches. Anything and everything in the growing world of volleyball. And thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.